Close the door. Close the yeah. door. Yeah. So yeah. I think we are live, just waiting for um, our other participant. So, um, Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you all so much. So uh, we'll just give uh, Minister Herring just a second to um, get chimed in and okay. get on. Um, we'll be fine. I'm so grateful um, for this time. I know that it's going to be wonderful. So um, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> probably um, every time. Every single time, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So we have a couple of people who are on. Um, we are for tonight, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. We are utilizing StreamYard. So if you want to um, add any questions, you are more than welcome um, to allow StreamYard through your Facebook app. And then we can actually feature some of the questions as well. So I just know that tonight is going to be an absolutely dynamic time. I am so, so excited and um, grateful. Um, so I'm really looking forward um, to everyone on tonight coming in, chiming in. Um, we are going to have a wonderful time. <laughs> okay, so um, what we'll go ahead and do is I just want to welcome you all here on tonight. We have some absolutely amazing guests um, for our live on tonight. We have uh, Minister Herring who will be chiming in. And we have the amazing pastors of Outlet Church. And so we are just beyond um, grateful for you all. We know that you do so much leadership work. And just to tell you all a little bit about my heart behind this work on tonight in particular. Um, I'm a therapist, of course, and, you know, a lot of my couples within the past week were just, you know, highlighting some things that were coming to bear uh, about making that spiritual connection. And I said, hmm, I need to talk about this with the experts. And so I'm so grateful <laughs> to have this time um, to speak to you all um, about this on tonight. And so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and one thing that I want to highlight about, you know, your spiritual connection in your marriage, it really is your lifeblood. You know, you have an opportunity to connect in your marriage um, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. But when we think about the essence of the spirit, that means the breath of life. And so when you connect spiritually with your partner and you connect with God, that literally breathes the breath of God into your marriage. And so some of the things and the nuggets that will be shared on tonight, I know that it will give you the power to breathe life into your marriage and also to strengthen you for any challenge, to strengthen you for any season, regardless of what you may face. OK, and so we're going to just kind of go back and forth with a few questions and and we'll go ahead yeah. and <laughs> go ahead and get us started. So, um, and um, <clears throat> also, too, I want to kind of in, give an introduction of you all as well. So, um, Pastor uh, Vincent, um, he is a licensed and ordained minister um, by Apostle Frederick Christ. Um, he uh, is with the Fellowship of Interfaith uh, Ministries, um, travels extensively throughout the country. So you are, you guys are going to get some major nuggets on tonight, major nuggets on tonight. Um, he is a sought out global advisor for high profile leaders and organizations nationally, as well as throughout Washington, D.C. He does a lot of work on equity and education, which is definitely um, an uh, definitely um, important for this time. Yay, yay, we have Minister Harry here as well. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> great, great, great. And then, so we're just beyond delighted um, to have you here on tonight. And also to his wonderful, lovely wife, um, uh, let's see here. I want to make you guys big and make me small. I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you are okay. <laughs> oh, no. Now we're like prime time. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, I think. I hope she didn't drop off. Oh, okay. 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 okay, okay cool. All right. All right. We're good. Um, 
Okay, that's better. That's better. There we go. Okay. So, um, also, too, Pastor Ashley, she travels ext extensively throughout the United States. She is the amazing dynamic duo with her husband at the Outlet Community Church, where they do a lot of leadership development um, with organizations. And they have a mission to empower leaders to create life-giving environments through building churches, organizations, and communities. So I know that you're going to get a wealth of information from them. They are definitely excellent verse in this field as well. And we have the amazing, beautiful, dynamic Minister Herring. Um, she is a leader um, and minister at her church. She has done extensive work with HBCUs. Um, and, you know, she has come from <laughs> generations, you all. She comes from amazing generations, four generations um, in ministry. So, you are hearing from the experts on tonight, okay? <laughs> so it's gonna be kind of like a popcorn. And, you know, I want to um, first give each of you guys just an opportunity. I definitely have some questions, but I want you all to have a snippet of time just to pour out like what was laid on your heart to share on tonight. And we'll kind of let that lay the groundwork of our conversation tonight. And then we'll go on to questions as well. Everyone on the line on tonight, you are more than welcome to post your questions and we can actually have them highlighted on the screen. So this is going to be an amazing dynamic um, conversation that you're going to leave with some nuggets to um, breathe into the life of your marriage. Okay, so, okay, so pastors, uh, Thomas, I'll let you guys go ahead and go. Yeah, I love this topic because challenging times is not about if, but when they happen in your marriage and in all relationships. And the word tells us that the best time to prepare for the storm is before the storm hits. Laying the foundation is tougher when you're in the middle of a storm. So it's kind of what we do during peacetime that prepares us for war. And this year, without a shadow of a doubt, it's been one thing after another. <laughs> we yes. have all been experiencing collective challenging times. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that, and uh, whether it's in our personal life or whether it's in the lives of people that we walk alongside, challenges have been personal as well. So uh, I believe that it's important for us to understand that crisis is going to reveal the nature of the relationship. Uh, wow. Crisis lets you know what we actually have. Mm -hmm. uh, a mentor of mine told me, he said, Vince, when you're pastoring, wait about two years before you give out any major titles or any major positions, because two years gives you an, a, a time frame to understand and have people uh, to get to know who you are and you have a chance to correct them. You see, everybody likes you when you do what they want. Your marriage, uh, you love marriage when it when you're getting what you want from it. You love marriage when it's going the direction that you written down in your prayer journal. But what happens in those times where it goes completely off script? And, uh, you know, tonight we really want to delve in and help those couples um, who may find themselves inside a challenging time. Uh, I know as a male, as a man, as a husband, I didn't necessarily have that model inside of my house as to what is a husband? How should a godly husband lead his family and lead his household? Uh, on top of that, I had personally witnessed uh, some major um, marriages kind of collapse uh, that I had looked up to or find, found out that the marriages I thought were rock solid actually weren't. And so there was a level of trepidation on my part, like, shoot, if they can't make it, I don't know how in the world, you know, how am I going to uh, make it? And as a, as a man, I try to find the right words because they say women love communication. We do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I definitely want to encourage every every man on the line. Let me give you the, the cheat code right now. Uh, <laughs> your wife does not need you to talk. She needs you to be present. Uh, sometimes we want to come in as the leader and the fixer, and she just wants the listener. And so if we can just cultivate a heart of listening, not just with our ears, but with our heart, yeah. uh, we'll be able to hear the verbal and nonverbal cues, the sighs, the pants. And uh, I was reading a quote today by Mark Twain, mm -hmm. who uh, said that his wife had been married five times to the same person. 
And uh, if that's the case, I think my wife is on like version two or version three <laughs> of, of Vince. I want to let y'all know I've got a patient wife, okay? Um, Amen. And, hey, that didn't come, on, that didn't on, come naturally. On, <laughs> you're, supposed to say, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to say no, honey. That didn't come naturally. <laughs> <laughs> she said that, that amen strong. Amen. Like, did y'all hear that? Amen? Uh -huh, you gotta take, you gotta did take the compliments, ladies. Take the compliments. <laughs> <laughs> but over the years, after bumping my head a few times, um, uh, learning to listen has been the greatest uh, advantage during these times. So I think I've said enough to kind of intro us. You know, yes. I don't want to get revved up. Yeah, I get. Do you, do you want me to chime in? So I, I, you know, there was a saying that was thrown out here, and I heard it like, like when COVID first started, it was never waste a good crisis. Yeah. And most people were like, you know, um, putting that toward their business, but I said, let's put that toward our marriage too. Yeah. You know what a crisis does? A crisis doesn't present problems; it just reveals what was already there. Yeah. And so, as my husband says, what you do in your downtime is going to help you greatly when you get to that obstacle. And I know for me, um, the biggest thing I've been able to develop in this crisis time is my character. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, but like working on myself, but also being able to process my emotions before emoting on him. Mm. Um, Come on now. Hey, I'll yeah, oh, yeah, I'll hey, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> And a lot of this stuff, y'all, we can sit up here and say it and it, it sounds like great and easy, but a lot of it is sometimes it's not. It's working through you and that's not that's not easy to do. <laughs> However, um, when you work on you and you get you to a better healthy space, then you can be healthy with your spouse. And so that's just my two cents on it. I am in total agreement because as you were saying, um, Pastor Ashley, oftentimes it starts with us. And I talk a lot about, I even was talking about this today with regard to social cognition. And that starts with you. It's your lens by which you experience the relationship. And if your lens is clouded, if your lens has, you know, preconceived notions that are working against you, regardless of what your partner is bringing to the table, you're going to react based on that. And so it yeah. always... It always starts with you. Yes, thank you, thank you both. I love that laying the groundwork. All righty, okay, Minister Herring, could you tell us kind of what was um, put on your heart to share to kind of segue us into this conversation on tonight? Yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Nice to um, meet you. <laughs> And to everybody watching as well, such a pleasure to be here. And I know that you and I spoke, Cassandra, you know, I, marriages as a whole, you know, that uh, the marriages, um, you know, they were on my heart. I know that I had done a couple of videos like the quarant uh, what did I say, quarantine and rebuild. Mm -hmm. um, but before this happened, you know, I just, I kid you not, my husband and I were just praying and um, we had heard about like, you know, some of the statistics that have now been revealed of what was going on. I mean, and we immediately started ministering to that, uh, I think maybe day two, uh, you know, prior to like, what are these families going to do? You know, they've had so many outlets thus far, you know, work and school and um, programs and volunteering. And now they're all going to be, you know, forced in a sense to face one another and deal with some of those issues that they haven't had to deal with. And so um, so from the domestic violence to just um, compatibility, all of that, uh, those were issues that were on my heart. And I know that you all have a heart for marriages. And, um, you know, and I think that this is going to be a, a huge blessing to everybody who watches, whether they're watching with us live now or later, because a lot of time the resources just aren't there for people that you know, the young people or, you know, and you don't have to be young, but a lot of time I know when we first got married, it's like we were hearing wisdom from older people, but we were just kind of like, but they may not have the same challenges that we have, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. they may not have the same background, you know, that my husband has, which isn't, you know, what you see typical in church. And so they don't have the same temptations. And so I wasn't hearing you know, what I needed to hear um, 
and, and, and I can't really say necessarily for my church because I was there, but there weren't, you know, it, there weren't that many options to hear from people who were like me, who were faced with the same uh, challenges that we had that could help and give us wisdom. And um, so that's what I'm looking forward to most tonight, being able to encourage a couple who is giving up, uh, you know, that they can go on you know, that they can do a marriage makeover, being able to encourage couples who may be disappointed. A lot of times women have been disappointed and disappointment is very hard for women at times to overcome because like you said, it skews the lens and they begin looking, you know, it's just nothing you can do is right. Um, so I'm praying and I'm, I'm in faith tonight for the hearts of the husbands and wives being drawn together for them turning to God together tonight and for rededication to marriage and that commitment taking place after we get finished. Oh, I love it. Thank you all so much. As you can see, it's going to be amazing on tonight. And so we're going to go and segue right into the questions um, for tonight. We'll kind of play a popcorn. <laughs> and so we are going to go straight to it. And I want you to possibly address this one for us, uh, Pastor Vince Thomas. And it's talking about leadership in the home. Um, and what what would you say respect to the husband's role in guiding that in the home? I believe the, the best model that we were given uh, is found in Ephesians chapter five. It's the model of Christ in the church. And I can, you know, in full disclosure, it's it's an area that I am still growing into as a husband and a leader of my home. Um, you know, typically in society, we base our value off of what we can bring to the table financially. You know, if we're if we're making enough money, if we're providing for all of our needs, um, you know, then we are the quote unquote man. And, and we feel as such because a lot of our worth is ascribed to what we're able to do. But I was uh, I began picking up a book. The Lord just kind of led me to uh, my bookcase. And it was the book, uh, The Power of the Praying Husband by um, Stormy O'Martian, I believe. And um, what she said is that 95 percent of all women, what they're praying for from their husband is that they can be the man, the husband and the leader that God has created them to be. And that takes all of the external pressure that we sometimes as men place on ourselves. I mean, we may not verbalize it a lot, but um, our happiest moments in marriage comes when our wife and our children have smiles on their faces. And when we feel like whether it's in our control or out of our control, and we feel like we're unable to physically do that, we feel less than. And uh, I've learned that if we could just have the character of Christ, of course, that's holy, that's blameless, but um, the the character of Christ is an ever-present help, just being there. So leadership just means being there. Sometimes I don't know all of the words to say, and I don't want to make up words at times, but I'm learning that when I'm present and in the moment, um, that can actually bring about change that's needed. Um, there may be times where the Lord whispers something into my heart, but the most intimate and the, the greatest leadership thing that we can do at, simultaneously is praying for our wife and our children. And um, vulnerability is something that, that you know I'm still working on, I'm still growing in, but the more vulnerable I am in my prayers, mm -hmm. the more the Lord is able to give me insight to specifically what does my wife need today? And, I, and you know, some of the most, uh, spiritual moments, you know, outside of the pulpit have happened in my home where I'll have a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge about what's going on with my wife. Because uh, there are some times where, I mean, I, I've married a hardworking, uh, strong woman who may not say everything that's going on in her mind, but her heavenly father knows. And if we remain open to his guidance, uh, which is, is a practice, a daily practice, he'll be able to tell us what uh, she needs, what our family needs and who we need to be uh, to help them be all that God has called them to be as well. Yes. Yes. Very powerful. I love that. You know, and, and I, I like how you said that it's something that we're, you're growing into. It's, it's a, it's a growth process. 
and you know, and and in your personal relationship, that kind of even guides you in that. And even you know, she has a personal relationship with with the Lord as well, and so that kind of brings about that sense of synergy. And I think that is so critical and important. So, and I'm I think that segues very nicely into the next um, question, um, which is for you, Minister Herring. And you know, how do we? You know, what is the use? How can we unite together in prayer um, and use prayer during these challenging times? as a couple. Yeah, I, I literally had to take uh, write down some notes because you know me. <laughs> I will start ministering. <laughs> but oh, yeah. then, you know, I will <laughs> no I literally had to like jot down notes because I I go, you know, this is this is a foundation for me, you know, prior to me even being married, you know, an accessory was my thing. I um, must have led an accessory prayer at 6 a.m. for about seven years straight, um, Monday through Friday, you know, for our church. Um, an accessory, actually, my grandfather was a, an assessor, and I'm sure, you know, we had other people prior to him that were an assessor. So prayer is, is major. And I know you and I talked about prayer being a weapon. And oftentimes, when you hear about prayer, you hear it in the sense of it being a weapon. And one of the things that I wanted to really focus on was prayer being a force. And the reason why I say that is because when you think about weapon, you think more so from a defensive aspect. You know, how can I defend? But like Pastor Ben said earlier, the best time to prepare for a storm is before. You know, you want to be built up before the storm so you can prepare. You know, and and you know, and and by chance, if something happens and you haven't been, I still know that God is good enough to be there and great enough to come through, even in the last minute. You know, but um, I think the first thing, the, the quick answer would be, how do we use our prayer as a force? Uh, in our marriage, it would be to use prayer faithfully, um, to use prayer passionately, and to use prayer intentionally. That would be the short answer. You know, um, I think oftentimes people use prayer as like a, a, a ritual, you know? It's like a rite of passage or it's a plan C. You know, it's not necessarily their foundation. But when you think about prayer, and and, and, and I'm not gonna assume that we're talking to all believers, um, you know, but, but Christ, you wanna make him the center, you know, of your marriage and the center of your home. Um, but when you think about prayer, we hear so many times, you know, for where there are two or three gathered together, there I am in the midst. And when you think about just what the word of God says in Matthew 18 and 20, we've often heard the analogy of a triangle, you know, where we say God is, you know, at the center and marriage is a triangle. The husband is right here. The wife is right here. And the closer you both get to God, the closer you get to each other. And to this day, that, that remains true. And that scripture also points to it that, you know, where there are two or more gathered together in my name, there I am, I'm in the midst, I'm in the middle, I'm right there. And so prayer being so important, I, I want people to begin to look at it like this. Prayer was made for man. And the reason why I want you to think about it from that aspect is because we already know, according to the word of God, um, marriage and family was the first institution, right? That was the first institution. That was the first place where every model of human interaction, of social behavior, of friendships between siblings, husbands and wives, that's where, you know, social order, it came, that was the first structure, the first institution. And so when he says that, you know, where there are two more gathered together in my name, there I am. And when any two touch me as a greeting according to my word, I'm going to be there. So we need to understand and, and stop looking at prayer as a, a plan C, but make prayer a pivotal. You know, it has to be a primary, it has to be, you know, the, the most primary tool, so to speak. It has to be a lifestyle. It needs to be the lifeblood of your marriage. Yes. And that's what our marriage was was and is built off of. We pray every day together. 
And and the and 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 the more that the more that you pray, the more and the closer that you grow to God in His Word, the more you're going to know about each other. It's never going to be um, overwhelmingly challenging to serve your husband. And when I say serve, I don't mean in a subservient, antiquated way, but I mean serving out of love. Like, honey, what do you need? What do you want? I have it. Kind of serve, not. Yes, sir. You know, <laughs> whatever you like. But the whatever you need, honey, it's right here. You know, and that's what marriage is supposed to be. You know, he he put us in a garden. It was supposed to be utopic, and so prayer has got to, it. It has to go from being um, number four and five and six and last resort on the list to being number one. Yes. That that's how important it is, and so. Where there are two more gathered together in my name, you want to see victory in your marriage. You want to see, um, you know, long life and and good health and you know breakthrough after big breakthrough. You want to see compatibility and fulfillment. Make prayer number one. Yeah. Um, as, and like I said, you know, and I think and the other thing I thought about, I said, well, maybe some people got discouraged because at times they may have they may have tried to pray and it didn't happen. You know, and I think that even if that were the case, you've got to look at it like this. It's no different than going to the gym, you know, and you start lifting weights. You know, it's not going to be easy when you first pick up that 5, 10, 20, men probably 30, 60. I don't know what you guys use. No, 10, 20. (laughs) (laughs) It's not going to be easy. But the more and more you begin to lift those weights, the more depth you're going to be, the easier it's going to become. And so in James 1, 5 through 7, it talks about if any of you lack wisdom, if there's anything that you're lacking, whether, and and you know my gift, and you know, I like to say is marriage and, and marketplace. Um, you know, when you think about it, it's like all partnerships, uh, prayer should be the prayer needs to be involved, whether it's your marriage or your business. And so when you start, you know, asking God, what can I do here? What business do I need to go in? What is it that we're supposed to be doing together? Because we're purposed and we were placed together for a reason. What am I supposed to be doing? The more you obey and you hear that happens through prayer, the easier the direction is going to be and the easier it's going to be for you to comply, you know? And so don't let uh, one prayer that may seem like it's not answered when you want it to be answered to discourage you from committing to this lifestyle. Um, And what I want to do too, is I wanted to do um, just like a giveaway of some kind. Um, And I'm thinking, you know, um, I'll give you guys my uh, email address and I have um, this book. I know he mentioned Stormy O'Martin earlier. Uh, can you see it? Okay. Yes, that's um, awesome. so, yeah, I want to bless about five couples uh, with this book. Um, and that'll be a blessing. And, and the reason why I want to do that is because, again, when you pray, you're supposed to pray the word of God, you know? And a lot of time, if you're new in your faith, you don't know what to pray. Mm-hmm. And so um, think of prayer as, um, you know, that's going to be your communication and your breakthrough to your marriage. And something like this will help you um, to start out as you're getting to grow in the word of God and as you're familiarizing with yourself on how to pray. Um, so thank you. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That is wonderful. And that's so yeah. key. And as you were saying, it definitely, it, 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 it gives you guidance. It gives you direction. And it's, it's literally oxygen that takes you to those higher heights. Yeah. I, I compare it to um, Eli Finkel's um, um, model on marriage. The higher you get up as well, it's like climbing a mountain. And the higher you go in climbing a mountain, um, the air gets thinner. And so you have to ensure that you're taking in enough oxygen. Mm, and, definitely. And you have you can't and as you're taking in that oxygen, it's like when you are supporting when you are utilizing prayer, it's like pouring oxygen back into the marriage. Yes, it's it is. The marriage, the life that it needs. It's giving it exactly what it needs to be sustained. Yes. And when it connects you and it's such a deep sense of intimacy. It is. You know, 
such a deep sense of intimacy is. And, and it strengthens that bond like nothing else. It, mm -hmm. It's beyond a mental connection. It's beyond a physical connection. It's a, it's the life of you. Yeah. It's the spirit yeah. of you connecting with the spirit of your part of your spouse, connecting with the spirit of God, and that breathes life into you. That rejuvenates you. It it clear, clears up the those pathways, and it gives you the strength to keep on climbing. That's to right. keep exactly. on higher, you know. And so I just thank you because the the what you gave was a practical uh, uh, resource for people who may not have, you know, sometimes you feel like you may have to make a perfect prayer, yeah. but you know, that's <laughs> it's your heart, you know, and to give people this strategy, I think it's so critical. So it, 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 is, it is, it is. And I want to tell you one more thing. Yes. Because you said, because you said practical, this is two things. Mm -hmm. My husband and I um, prayed. Remember we talked about getting closer to God, you get closer to each other. A couple years ago, I was experiencing headaches galore. Mm -hmm. And I, it was like migraines mm -hmm. and um, and just some other symptoms. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit literally told my husband to tell me to stay away from bread. Just, mm -hmm. just stop with the bread. I, I was having an issue. Um, I'm very productive. <laughs> I like to be productive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like to be energetic. Um, I like to, you know, I'm a schedule warrior. I like to plan. And um, I was not able to focus the way I usually mm. do. This had been going on for a minute. And um, and then the headaches would come. And he said, stay away from bread. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you that. Um, and, and he knows I love bread. I love <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I love cupcakes. I love donuts. I love <laughs> And so, um, and I said, okay. I said, and at first I was a little annoyed, you know, it's just like, what are you trying to say? I'm overweight or something, you know? And then he's like, no. And so he's like, I'm just telling you, I was like, oh, you would say bread. And I, <laughs> uh, again, I, I stayed away from bread for a whole seven days. Um, everything was perfect and normal. My, my, my clarity everything. And so then later I found out I had a gluten allergy. Wow. wow. But God, you know, the Holy Spirit told my husband. Yes. You know, and then the other time was we had a project that we were, uh, you know, putting in a proposal for. The Lord gave me the exact number mm -hmm. to allow us to win. Mm -hmm. And I had no prior research. I, I didn't have any sources. It was private. No one gave us a book or a manual. And the Holy Spirit gave me the exact number, exact. Wow! And 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 we won, and we've been winning ever since. <laughs> Amen. And, and that's the power of prayer. Yes. So yes. I just wanted to give you those two. You know, of course, to God be the glory. We we wouldn't yes. know. Um, yes. And so prayer, prayer is powerful. And you know what happens is people you spend time talking to, they rub off on you. Yeah. You know? So, and in a good way or a bad way, right? So evil right. communication corrupts good manners, right? But if you are in constant communication with God, what is happening is his character is going to rub off on you. Yes. When his character rubs off on you, then you are equipped to be your better version of yourself in your marriage. I think sometimes we want to show up as our best selves in our own strength. But what we have to also to recognize is that God in all of his virtues and the fruit of the spirit, as we are spending that time in prayer, his character rubs off on us. Yes, yeah. it does. As we start to reflect him in our marriage. Yes. You know, and so be encouraged in that respect. Now, I am so excited <laughs> because we are about to get to three, because I got the experts on here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have the pastors and the ministers, you know, it's like I need to go straight to the source. Mm -hmm. And okay, so what are uh, pastors, uh, Thomas, what are three critical biblical principles that are essential for a healthy marriage? Oh, yes. You want to kick it off or? 
Well, I'll say this, and I think we've all been alluding to it. Um, I think the Lord gave us this phrase. We and we actually attended uh, a marriage. Look like this was marriage counseling, wasn't it? And we we promote that. Listen, y'all. So we have marriage counselors. Just we have marriage here. counselors. We, we, we do. We go to marriage counselor all the know, time. I, I'm perfect, and I, I can't. You know. <laughs> <I'm not perfect. laughs> Y'all pray for him. But we want to say that because it's such a taboo thing in our community. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with going to marriage counseling couples. So if that's you and you need it, reach out. There are people there to help you. Accountability. That's number one. Yes, accountability. Um, you know, as, as our church was growing, it was starting to do things that I thought wouldn't happen for years. Mm -hmm. We were starting to see those things begin to happen rapidly. Um, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, help me be a better pastor. And he didn't answer my question. What he did was he allowed us to get marriage counseling and help uh -huh. me to be a better husband. Mm -hmm. and what I learned by being a better husband is yeah. being a pastor was a byproduct. Yeah. And so I live yeah. out of my marriage and not out of my title because that's something that I do. But what yeah. she sees, that is the that is the first and greatest priority. So I would say number one is um, accountability. Yes. And yeah. I would say number two is being connected, stay connected, not just committed. Mm -hmm. um, That's we hear our couples, like especially those who've been um, married for 30 plus, 40 plus years, and you hear them say, we've been together for this long, and we're like all clapping, oh, however many years. Like, you know, our grandparents, we had that sheet cake <laughs> at they like silver. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen them hold hands now one, one time, time in your life. No. No. <laughs> we are, we are white at the sheet cake party. And we're celebrating that we marriage. Having, you know, but they, they've been together. We've been separate yeah. rooms. Yeah, right. So it was this thing that we celebrate time. We celebrate years, but we don't celebrate the intimacy that they have between each other. And yes. I being, being connected is so much more than being committed. Yes. Um, it, because I can commit to the marriage, but not to my husband. Mm -hmm. Right? But That's connect. I have to connect to him. I like to connect. Well, you know what? Is that what you're talking, talking, talking about? Are you talking about that right now? Is that what we're talking about right now? Well, that's one of the essentials. Oh, okay. I, 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 didn't know. I, I didn't know. I had. I got. Y'all see my color lights? I bought these lights on purpose. I got these lights in the whole house. So wherever room I'm in, she know what color it means. If it turn red, she know what the red light district means. Y'all just pray. She Stretch your hands towards. <laughs> but yes, I would say stay connected versus committed. And then uh, the fewer the secrets, the stronger the marriage. Yeah. Definitely. That's good. Fewer, fewer the secrets, the stronger the marriage. Yeah. And so living a a, a, a naked life, yeah. and what I mean by that is yeah. we can view that what communication is to women is what sex is to men. Yeah. And if in a communication standpoint, my attitude is to be as, as exposed as possible, as vulnerable as possible, um, in our marriage, as we've grown together, which uh, takes time, it, it takes it yeah. takes time. And takes time. and as you're you're experiencing challenging times, you're becoming something in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. Just know that when you work at your marriage in the midst of challenging times. So I like what uh, Minister Rachel was saying: quarantine and rebuild. Yes. You'll then be happy at the version of your marriage on the other end. Of, of crisis. And so when I got the revelation that if I can approach my wife in communication the <laughs> same way I want her to approach me for those late night specials, <laughs> what it did was it unlocked a level of understanding of listening yes. um, inside yeah. of the marriage. Because I mean, we got we to gotta talk about sex and we marriage. Gotta, we got to talk about this. Because the, the fact of the matter is, us married folk, we ain't sleeping together. And and, and culture so does a great job of when we watch movies, the oh, married yeah. couples are the ones who look sad. The sad, broken the down, ones who look like down. And then you get the, well, if you're, well, you know, when you get married, that's all going to stop. It's going to just fall you straight know? off. You know, that's the stereotype yeah. that we talked. 
and, people are socialized. Yeah. And, and it's the thermometer of the marriage. It's not the unit that heats right. and cools. And so it gives you an indication of somewhere along the way, yeah. we have a secret, whether it's uh, bitterness. You know, when, when the Bible talks to the husband, it says that husbands be not bitter towards yeah. your wives. As men, we have... We go into our silent cave because we're holding some level of resentment that's hardened or become callous. Yeah, and but I will say sometimes as women, we don't always create a space for them to be vulnerable, right? Yeah. And the minute we ask them to open up and they give us something, we don't like how they said it, we're gonna shut them down again because we're gonna attack them with our words. Um, and so it's so important that as he's opening up and some men are, are better, you know, some men have practiced it more than others, right? So some men, it's easy for them to open up, others not so much. And whatever you're working with, the God has given you the grace to do it, sister. So yeah. amen, you can do this. Um, yeah. But when you see him opening up just a little bit, encourage that, encourage it. I mean, we're like the, the, the little boys that are in the house. Like as men, we don't change, we just get older. So if you That's have a, a, a two, true. three year old boy and he draws you a picture, and you tell that, that young boy who's all happy about the picture he drew, like, oh, that's not Picasso. That's not Michelangelo. Get that out of here. That's the last picture you're going to get. But I'm sure you all don't do that. When you see, a, you know, your sons uh, bring you a nice picture that says, here, mommy, here, mommy. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, see, I mean, and so we need that same type of cheering around the house on yeah. small things. I mean, I remember the first time I really started wiping down the kitchen counter. My wife takes care of this house. She does. <laughs> like, I don't I don't want for nothing. I ain't touched a pair of drawers in like 10 years. So she does a great job around mm -hmm. the house. But I saw that while she's helping me lead this ministry and she's finishing her master's, let me help take some loads off of her. And so the first time I just wiped down the kitchen counter because I ain't touched it in a long time. And she likes to you know, wash a certain type of way. We ain't going to talk about that tonight. No, talk, we'll, we'll I'm talking about that. that but, but she came downstairs and she was like, yeah, how do you look at you? I'm like, yeah, see? And I, I wiped down the, the counter uh, top. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I took then, out the trash, I took out the trash. <laughs> and I was sweeping. I was sweeping. <laughs> But yeah, just that one bit of encouragement encouraged so much more from him, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. and so sometimes we want to nag our husbands to pieces, but honestly, it's the it's the exact opposite. It's encouraging when he does something right. It could be the smallest of things, and yes. it'll be awesome. I love that. Yes, that's awesome. That positive reinforcement, speaking to the good, and you'll get more of it. You know, and because whatever we focus on will be amplified in our marriage. And so, and I, and I love, uh, Pastor Ashley, how you were saying, not just commitment, but connection. And what that reminds me of is Sternberg, Dr. Sternberg has this model, three-pronged approach to love in marriage. Um, and what he said was that there are three sides, one passion, another side commitment, and another side intimacy. And what you were saying is that it's more than just having commitment. You know, that is more than having just that. And sometimes we do celebrate that. We celebrate those years. But, you know, having that intimacy, that's the connection. I love that. Yeah. I, love that. I do Thank too. You know I love I love that as well. I, I so agree. There were so many things that you guys said that I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm right there, I'm right there. Um, because that connection, you know, staying connected, you're right, you do grow up seeing, or even, you know, sometime uh, I've been in situations as, you know, a spiritual marriage counselor, and, uh, you know, you will hear people tout that, oh, well, we've been married for 20 years, or, and it's like, but you were only happy for five. Oh, mm -hmm. uh oh, you know, or you were only well, you know, I'm just saying, so that's that mm -hmm. it's the truth. She's right. Make that make that commitment to staying connected as well. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. And then I the what she said about her husband too, I thought was so good because one of the things that I know is that you know it says in the word of God that you know, men were created in the image of God and he inhabits the praises of his people. And so when you're praising and you're lifting him up and you're encouraging him and you're gassing him up, you know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you, yes, you yes. put that battery yes. in that back, 
he is gonna perform and he's gonna show you yes i am the husband man so i i think that was so adorable because my husband does the same thing he does something and he wants to show me look what i did that's right. oh my goodness that's so good and like you said even if you're not really um interested you you have got to 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 make a conscious decision and effort to say no i'm interested in you if anybody's going to be interested in you and caring and watching and 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 you know of trying to help you or further what you're doing it's going to be me and my husband knows that and that that's with everything so that was just uh some great advice that you guys shared and i'm just in, you know i agree a hundred percent Yes, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so, um, Minister Harry, you guys, you have such a beautiful marriage, and you guys have won a lot of battles, yeah. or won, you know, and 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 been very successful um, in your marriage and successful in the marketplace. What would you say? are three spiritual strategies that have helped you to win in your marriage? Well, um, it's uh, so I asked my husband this actually, yeah. because I, I, I could not narrow it down to three. Um, <laughs> it's fine if it's but, more. But no, I, I did for the sake of, you know, um, you know, your questions. And the first I said was agreement. Mm. And, most people, when they think about agreement, you know, uh, this is this is spiritual. <laughs> the Bible says, "Can two walk together except they be agreed?" How can they? How can you walk together towards the same purpose, the same vision, if you're not in agreement? You know, um, so agreement is the first spiritual strategy. Mm -hmm. And when I say strategy, meaning you know, the Bible talks about the two becoming one. And I know that that, that different people and different counselors and there's different, um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, viewpoints on individuality in marriage. And I am not by any means or in any way trying to say that you lose your individuality. You don't. Mm -hmm. However, I, I wholeheartedly, I love the scripture, First Peter three and seven, it says, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. This yeah. is supremely important. Dwelling with one another according to knowledge, you know, um, and walking in agreement. And I say this because you, the same way we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, you know, I, I never want to be in a situation. And this was when I first, you know, uh, when I first got married, where I know something that you don't know. Mm. Uh, vice versa, because knowledge is empowering. And what, what couples do sometimes, I, I, I've noticed in counseling is, is that people use knowledge as a source of domination. Mm. That's you know, some, yes. someone might know something and they withhold or they don't share for whatever reason. And I think that as a couple, uh, when you come together, and I know you talk about this all the time as well, Dr. Cassandra, with vision, right? Um, you talk about it all the time and you know um, my standpoint on it as well. You have to have a vision. And if you have a vision, there has to be one head, you know? And, and I'm not talking about a, a person. I mean, what is that vision? We can't have two goals. We can't have two different directions. So that's why that agreement is important. You know, in the Bible, he said, let us, make man in our image. There was an agreement there. Covenant is all about agreement. You know, we see in other scriptures where he said there was nothing that they imagined to do that they couldn't do because they were in agreement. And so the purpose and plan uh, for your life, for your marriage, your children, uh, the people whose lives are gonna be affected by that blessing that God has put on you guys, to chase 10,000 or, or, or 100,000, whatever it is God called you to do, it's going to happen when you are both walking in agreement. And that is an agreement in every aspect. And so there are some times as women, I think one of you mentioned it earlier, where you might feel some kind of way, but you still need to encourage or say something nice. And it's no different than this house that we have, that we bought. This house, um, 
my husband, you know, I, I'll, I'll try to shorten it, and, you know, I'll try to shorten it for you. But I remember just being so stressed out about finding another house. And I remember the Holy Spirit said, let him choose. And, and, and typically, it, you, the stories that I hear are the women choose. That's right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> he said, let him choose. And I did. You know, and 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 just so many great things have happened. You know, since we purchased our house, this house, and this, you know, it was five years ago. Um, but just even in the neighborhood, even in the value, even in the safety, just everything that just was godlike. You know, yeah. but it happens when you walk in agreement, and sometimes you have to put your not sometimes as much as possible. Put your flesh down and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you when you find yourself not walking in alignment with one another. Mm. You know what? What? What is it? Why are you insisting on your own way? And I love how you piggybacked off of what I was talking about with prayer, and you talked about you know just like evil communications corrupt good manners. Okay, but when holy communication when that happens, what mm. happens? You know, and so you're blessed. You begin to see the revelation of God's character and his love on you. And so when you want to say something or render evil for evil, instead you render good. Or when you want to fight fire for fire, you say, no, I'm going to put water on that fire and I'm going to be kind. And so that agreement is number one. We, If we fight, we're fighting for agreement. And, and I said, meaning I'm, I'm putting down my, nope, Rachel, you know you want, Whatever you like, <laughs> you know, because it, it's not a deal breaker, mm -hmm. you know, it's not. And so you've got to be willing to put your flesh down and understand what's really important, Ooh. you know, uh, cool. not just happy a wife, happy life, but happy house, happy spouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So agree, agreement, dwell with your wife, your husband, you know, let them know what you know. That's number one. The second one is transparency. Pastor Vince, you touched on this. Genesis 2 and 2. And the man and wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Um, that nakedness is talking about transparency. I heard a counselor at one point say that there should be some secrets. And I'll never forget. I was kind of, I was very baffled. Mm -hmm. um, I believe as much as godly possible that you should not have any secrets from your spouse. That, that's because, again, when he created them, he put them before each other naked. Um, it was nothing. There was nothing to be ashamed of. And I understand, like um, Pastor Ashley said, you know, sometime, um, you know, women you can be a certain type of way and vice versa. You know, maybe somebody's dealing or growing and maybe they are judgmental or maybe they are opinionated or maybe they, they still are dealing with trying to dominate or, you know, whatever that is. But as much as possible, even if that's not the case, make that the goal. You guys should walk in such love and such light that you feel open enough and comfortable enough to get naked yes. in every area, you know, spiritually, financially, my husband and I, like the how people have the different accounts and secret passwords and all of that. We have none of that. And we never have, you know, from day one. So, and then the third one is, is un uncommon, I think, but for us, generosity is the third oh. spiritual. That yeah. is the third spiritual uh, strategy. We have made it our business to be generous. I love the scripture. Most people think of it in a context of the offering at church. Um, but it says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And so when you are generous in your marriage, and I'm talking about in every area, I'm talking about sex, I'm talking about uh, serving, I'm talking about listening, I listen a lot, you know, I'm talking about, you know, with, with generosity, and, and then that generosity, it it, it prohibits selfishness from taking hold of you. When you get married as believers. Uh, I truly believe, you know how when you get saved, it's like you, you're, 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 you're trying to, you know, sometimes you're trying to make sure you don't go back to what you used to be in a sense. I believe when you get married, there's a fight to pull you back into what you used to be, independent. Yeah. 
you know, single minded, yeah. uh, you know, and so you've got to make sure that you're generous because it stops that that natural proclivity of wanting to go back to selfishness. When you're generous in every area, we're generous charitably. So that means we give, you know, don't make sure that you understand tithing and offering as a couple. I know a lot of women who have a hard time with getting their husband to tithe. You know, that's something that you guys need to make sure that you, you know, wherever you give to, whether you're doing something charitably, I personally believe in tithing and offering. You may believe in volunteering. Even that, it's another way to make sure that you keep your marriage, you keep that generosity and that spirit of giving on your marriage. Because if not, that's that's how the door opens to other stuff. When people have affairs, it's because of selfishness. Yeah. Oh, when people start spending secretly and, and, and things start going down financially, it's because of selfishness. But if you keep generosity at the forefront of your marriage, you won't have to deal with those things. Oh, so many rich nuggets. Oh my goodness. Thank you so <laughs> much. I just know that resonated with so many people. And I remember you were highlighting the importance of vision. And, you know, I think when we're thinking about challenging situations, vision can be an anchor. So if you can have vision beyond whatever the current circumstance is, that can be your anchor, it can be your hope, and it can help you press through yep. and, 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 and persevere. Yeah. And so I think, you know, one thing I always say is that I think sometimes people become so discontent with their marriage because they're trying to look for a fulfillment from their spouse that only God can feel fulfill right. and that also only their purpose can fulfill. Yeah. And so sometimes that discontent has nothing to do with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and as you were saying about being in alignment and walking in togetherness, you know, really kind of doubling back and getting to the basics. Because when we think about organizations, you know, some of the most successful organizations in the world, they have a vision, they have a mission, they know exactly where they are going and it keeps them centered regardless of the season. Yeah. And I think the same is true for us as married couples. Having that vision, having that mission is very critical and it keeps you centered. It keeps you grounded. And I think one way I always encourage people is to think about, well, what is your unique purpose? What are your unique gifts? What get, what fills your bucket? And how could that be complementary to your spouse? And yeah. how can you create an overall vision and purpose because when we fulfill purpose we become fulfilled in general That's right. That's right. and it's it's it's, it's an in, it's so in serving the purpose and the utility of the marriage it gives you a sense of fulfillment and i think that is so critical so that you're not just looking at this person like oh do you feel my cup in my bucket you know? <laughs> <laughs> but really kind of saying okay well what's what's the bigger picture like yeah. what is our why what is our why for even being married like yeah. why did god bring us together what did, what type of what did he want us to affect how did he want us to affect change in the earth mm -hmm. and yes. when you're serving something bigger than yourselves then that within itself will make you make you definitely more fulfilled oh this is so good I so <laughs> You know what it says: a man that findeth the wife findeth a good thing. Good thing. Favor from the Lord. And yes. I, the other day, uh, our pastor said, "One act of favor can eliminate decades of labor." And oh. So, and I thought that was great. Like you said, what are we supposed to do together? There's yeah. something that we're going to do together that we couldn't do on our own. So life easier when you yeah. get. It. Yes. I and, <laughs> and you know, even the complimentary nature, I think oftentimes God will connect you with someone who you have a similar mission, but you have different personalities. And I think that those like we're complimentary, yeah. you know, and you know, and with that, it's kind of like that per the other person covers your blind spots yes. of your yes. and of your strengths, you know? And so, you know, 
one thing that I want to really drive home on tonight, you know, especially since I have the experts in the house, you know, <laughs> I want to know, you know, what pastors, Thomas, what do you believe is the role of the church? Uh-oh, did they, did they chime out? Uh-oh, did we lose them? I don't oh, know. No. Maybe they're uh, bad. Maybe so. Oh, goodness. Maybe their battery died. Oh, maybe so. Well, we'll oh, well, we'll keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They pop oh, in. yes. I know that means it's going to be good. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Connected, we know it's going to be on fire. <laughs> get back on, it's going to be popping. So we're excited <laughs> about that. Um, and um, fifth is really uh, another question for you with regard to, I think sometimes when we're in challenging situation, it's so, our, our vision and even our speech can sometimes become so clouded that we're not speaking the things that we want to see. And yeah. oftentimes, too, it's very easy to um, complain. Yeah. And, and, and with that, my question is, you know, how can we speak life, you know, during those challenging times, even when we don't see the solution, even when we don't feel like it, even though everything about the situation kind of counters what we're hoping to experience. So how how do we speak and declare what we're hoping uh, to see and hoping that the Lord will do? I think that um, we do it three ways. <laughs> Okay. Number one, well, number one would be biblically. Yes. Number two would be boldly, mm. and number three would be consistently. <laughs> okay. And the reason why I say that is because, and again, this is—it's so much. Each thing you're asking is great, but we're really skimming the surface. And so, yeah. you know, I try, and just like you, I know, um, you try to give what you can. But when you think about how do you decree and declare? what you believe God will do, especially during times like this. First of all, it has to be biblically. Um, on the YouTube video that I had done for recently, one of the videos I did, I talked about man being a tripart being, you know, and people don't always understand the power of your words, but your words are powerful. You know, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of our tongue. And man is a tripart being, meaning, you know, we live in a body. You know, we live in a body, we have a soul, but we are a speaking spirit. And so when we speak, our words are powerful. And so what we've got to do is we've got to learn how to model our speech and use it like we see God did in Genesis. In Genesis, you know, it says that the earth was without form and without void. And when God wanted to see something different, what did he do? He spoke what he wanted. He said, let there be light in the midst of darkness. He didn't complain and say, it's dark out here. I sure wish I could see. No, he said, let there be light. And so the way that you decree and declare a thing and what you want to see, you got to understand your words are powerful. Don't just think that, oh, I, I just, I wasn't feeling good. No, as a couple, my husband and I, we have several confessions several confessions and we confess what we believe and so our confession it covers different areas of our life you know how you think about that soteria all of those different parts of salvation that pie you know and let's just talk about your life you have your family your children your work you've got your your health you've got you know your social you know your social a sphere. So what are you speaking? What are you saying? What do you believe in God? Are you believing God for uh, seven, you know, or however many streams of perpetual income, mm -hmm. you know, consistent that God is your source, that you'll be able to say no man made me rich? What are you believing there? What are you believing in the area of health? Are you believing God for divine health? And you will walk in divine health and no sickness, germ or disease will be able to overtake your body. And that though it may come, it won't be able to stay. Then what do you believe? And so you've got to first under get, get together what you and your husband are believing for. And you have to declare that so that when debt knocks on the front, you can answer it with Jesus paid my debt <laughs> by faith. And guess what? And now I'm hearing what to do spiritually, to do naturally, so that that can manifest and my faith will speak, 
right? So you've got you've got to be able to declare it because you have a godlike ability. But don't speak the problem. Speak the biblical solution. Speak what God said. When the storm shows up, you can say, "Peace, be still." Yes. Why? Because He showed us. And another resource that I want to be able to bless those same couples with is God's word for every circumstance. Ooh. Now, what I love about this is, again, and this is for the, the, I know a lot of people may not, you know, be plugged into a church and also understand that agreement, agree on where you're going to go to church at, agree where you're going to get <laughs> the word of God, you know, someplace where you've got sound doctrine, right? But for those couples who are just saying, I know I love him and I know she loves me and we wanna we want to do better. And because I know couples like this, they're having a hard time finding a church, they're in others, they're not in my state, you know, um, uh, there's networks, but you know, until you go there, you don't really know what's, you know? And so I know couples like that, but this is a great resource, God's word for every circumstance. And this is written by Casey Tree. And so, yeah. This is one of the ways that you can begin to declare what God, you know, what 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 you want to see. Instead of saying, we don't have this and you didn't do that. No, I believe that every need is supplied. I believe that 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 sufficiency is coming from the north, south, east, and west. You know, I believe whatever it is. And now when you look here, you'll see a table of contents. You'll see agreement, ambassadors, anger, authority, baptism of the Holy Spirit, being led, boldness. Confidence, courage, dating, destiny, discipline, divorce, you know, and so it God's word for every circumstance, praise, prayer, peace, oppression, health, forgiving, fears, family, doubts, serving and volunteering. What does he say about sleeping for the person who can't sleep at night? And so there are resources out there, you know, so don't let the lack of um, you know, what you know stop you from getting to what you desire and what you believe is available in Christ. So I'm also going to make sure that um, we get whoever, uh, I'm probably going to do the first four or five couples. And I have this, I have everything on hand. And so I'll make sure that I get that out to you um, today or tomorrow. Okay. So make and so, sure to put in the comments your name or, or DM, um, um, Rachel Herring directly, Minister Rachel Herring directly for those, um, or you can DM, DM I'm, me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, I don't, I, I, my email I think is uh, connect at virtue over vanity, um, dot com, And that's a podcast that I have, virtue over vanity. Um, and my website is rachelherring.com, but um, I'm going to make it to where the first four or five couples um, that email that say, I would like that, whether it's the confession, um, God's word for every circumstance or the, um, the couple's prayer book to teach you how to begin praying together. Um, it's really not long and it's the same thing. You have the titles in here, his self image, you know, talking his, you know, his speech, you know, sometimes people speak harshly, the, her desires, sexuality, beauty, marriage, Emotions, that's a big one. So it, it, it goes over and, and, and helps you get that initial foundation um, of how to pray together. So I'm, I'm thinking that'll be the best way to do it, uh, Cassandra. Thank you so much, thank you. And when you guys got chant, that's so generous, another principle that you were talking about earlier. <laughs> and so I, you know, uh, Pastor, uh, Vince and Ashley Thomas, I said, whatever you guys were about to say must have been good for the. For I'm telling you, the, the whole computer shut off. We said. This is going to get my charger too. Let's, so let's I don't know. We'll, we'll go to my office now. Yeah. Yeah. I said, whatever it is, I know it's going to really resonate with the with people who are watching. And so I'm going to repeat the question just as a reminder, you know, so what is the role of the church in supporting couples during difficult times? Oh, I think that uh, growth and healing happens in the context of relationships. Uh, the church has to be a connector, a bridge. Um, unless we have someone who is on staff that is licensed in the area of counseling, 
the extent that we can offer is spiritual guidance and pointing people to the right resources. But I believe that the church's responsibility is to create a holistic approach to a healthy marriage and healthy couples, which starts what I what I call preventative. And that is teaching healthy life skills to our what I call emerging generation, um, giving our unmarried population an opportunity to have an outlet and to have a model of behavior. Uh, that is appropriate to marriage. Oftentimes in church, what's subconsciously communicated is that if you aren't married, then you are less than and your prayer life is lacking somewhere. And by teaching people that who you are prior to marriage is who you're bringing to the marriage. And so the better you prepare the better of an opportunity you have to experience the covenant that God desires for us to do. So as a church, I believe our role is holistic. I believe our role is um, more than just a sermon series on Sunday, more than just come here, the first lady, and I tell you about how great of a marriage we have, because you can't tell us otherwise, we got the microphone. Yeah, Um, And that's another thing I think the church is done. I'm going to just talk candidly here. You know, a lot of times in the church, you hear the standard, the standard of being, the standard of marriage, the standard of living that y'all, if we're honest, most of us didn't get there overnight. Yes. Um, but it's spoken and it, it's relayed to as if we did, right? And so there is just no um, understanding or empathy with couples that, have, that are going through. Yeah. I think that's one thing the church has really, yes, we're teaching good wisdom, good knowledge, good doctrine, but we're missing empathy. And we don't get those couples and say, listen, you're here, but you don't have to say, I've been there, I've done that, you are right. You know, you can make it through this. And so that's one thing I think Vince and I have been so open with. We're very, we're very open. (laughs) We're open, but like, you know, we we ain't going to sit up here and tell you we have made it and we perfect. You know, Mm -hmm. we're going to tell you. Speak for herself. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I'm going to give it to you straight because that's how we grow. And one thing we learned early on when we first got married, we got mentors. Yes. Um, I believe, like, yes, you need mentors, but you also need couples that are going or walking this journey like you. So many couples I know, they have a lot of single friends, right? Because they've just transitioned and they don't have a lot of other married couples are hanging around. And so their habits tend to go back to the single days because they feel pressured to be the same old them or whatever when they're in a totally different business life. Right? Because, because cleaving is not a byproduct of marriage. It's not. It's an act of faith within the marriage. Yes. Oh, wow. So when the scripture tells us to, you know, leave your mother and father and cleave to your husband, so we think that's automatic. Yeah, like when we say I do, cleave. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But there are a lot of there are a lot of marriages that you know if something happens and this is a good indicator I'm not saying this is the only indicator this is a good indicator if something happens and you are in SOS nine one one help who do you first call That's right the uh, psalmstress uh, escape said who do I run to You so silly to fill this <laughs> empty place <laughs> it's, it's not your spouse but it's, it's your mom you kind of have an indicator of who you have you know who's your go-to that's um, good that's just one not, not the only but um but yeah i i think empathy is so important and i and i think um getting people around you that are like-minded that are going where you're going and helping you to work through some of your isms yes. yeah i like that too the empathy um because i know i spoke to this um uh, cassandra about this before um, I just, the Lord had put it on my heart to do something a while ago. Um, and what I noticed was that couples in a church, a lot of time it's, and, and, and I try to figure it out. I'm saying, like, is it love? Is it an atmosphere? Is it a loving atmosphere that maybe needs also to be cultivated? Because I didn't understand why when people are dealing with issues, why they think, my marriage is private. And I said to Cassandra, I said, but divorce is public. If you guys, we're going to find out. So why go through this alone and feel ashamed to come for help? And so, you know, it made me wonder, you know, as a church, um, you know, like as the church, could we 
be more empathetic, like you said? Could we be more loving? You know, could we actually uh, let down the veil and, and talk more about those challenges so people know that they're not in it alone? Yes. You know, but whatever it is, we, we've got to get on top of it right away so that people are not suffering silently and feeling ashamed to share what it is they're going through because there is help. That's, I love that. It, it's community and, you know, commitment thrives in community. And I think sometimes we, we feel isolated or we may even feel ashamed of some of the challenges that we're going through. But, you know, I think right now the, the climate that we're in is showing us the value of community mm -hmm. and the value of having others around you who are going through a similar situation. And, I, you know, it just highlights the fact that we definitely, we definitely need one another. You know, so I wanted to ask parting words, if there's one thing you want to make sure, like one thing that you want to say to encourage the people who are watching right now and who will watch this later, what would that be? If you're in the midst of a challenging time in your marriage, you only have so much energy to expend in a given day. And I would ask that you expend that energy wisely and minimize the temptation to combat your spouse. Mm -hmm. It's important that in crisis in marriage that we um, run to each other, that we mm -hmm. lean into the love of each other. And it's in those moments that you begin to create what I call altars or tributes of things that you can go back to of remember when we hit this and we banded together and, and at the end of this we emerged even stronger and those victories throughout your marriage help to give you the confidence as future tests and trials arise that listen i've got my partner in mm -hmm. this we ain't and going listen, nowhere. <laughs> i don't need anything but god his word and the person that God has given me. Amen. And, uh, you know, from that will we'll emerge through that. So I just want to encourage couples. It's, it's tempting to take the anger, the stress, the frustration, oh, yeah. and to project it on the person that you can see. But your spouse is not your enemy. Yeah. And I will say this to Coach Tellah Hughes and my sister phrase. A lot of times we want to uh, try to change our spouse, right? They're, they're not doing enough. They're not being enough. Um, if they're the problem, typically. We always say they're the problem, not us, <laughs> right? Like if they just did this, everything will work out, right? But it doesn't always happen that way. So what I would um, recommend women do is just understand, instead of trying to change or control our, our men, our spouses, let's just cover them in prayer, mm. right? So let's not change our control, let's cover. Um, and, and that's going back into Minister Rachel's um, whole spill of, of prayer and the power of prayer, it works. It works, ladies. And so as we are dealing with certain things, just know that, you know, there's a spiritual force behind everything. And sometimes it's not always just what's on the surface, right? That, and that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to get you focused on what's on the surface. So that's yes. not always the case. Um, and so just go into prayer. Go into that time and understand that you can cover your husband. And don't try to control him. Just cover him. I love that. I love that. Minister Rachel Harris, what would be your parting words, would you say? My parting words would be to remember that great marriages require great faith. Mm. Great marriages require great faith. And when you think about faith, faith, um, you know, it's not what you see. It's what you believe. And so have faith in your spouse. You know, have faith in your marriage. Have faith in the God that you serve. You know, God wants to do a great work in and through your marriage. Yes. And a lot of time when you continue to look from the natural eye and you don't see any sign of changing, you don't see any sign of progress, you don't see any sign of keeping your word, it can cause you to, um, you know, uh, to, 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 to basically give up. And I just want to remind you that great marriages require great faith. 
for the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And so even though your spouse at times may be showing you something opposite of what you want to see, of what you know they're capable of and what you're believing God showed you, the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He hates marriage, but God loves it. And let's not help him destroy us by forgetting what we know. You know, believe in your spouse. Believe in the best. Meditate on 1 Corinthians 13. You know, look in the Amplified Version and think about what love is and become love. Don't judge. Don't render evil for evil. Don't always have something to say back. Don't do the silent treatment game. You know, but be loving. I'm telling you, the Bible says love breaketh the hardest bone. And when that spouse sees you focusing on, on being a loving person and creating and cultivating an atmosphere of love, they're going to have no choice but to reciprocate it. Just be patient. And um, for me, like I shared, um, you can email me at connect at virtueovervanity.com and that's connect c-o-n-n-e-c-t at virtueovervanity.com and if you want one of these um books i'm going to give it uh send them out to the first um five couples this is the book that i told you about which is for um prayer you want to learn how to pray you want to commit and you want to start out you can rededicate today. We can actually pray together um, before we all get off. You can rededicate to your commitment and to your marriage. You can rededicate to your prayer life. You're probably kicking yourself saying, man, we're up here struggling. We're not getting along. My house is not a happy home. I'm, I'm, I'm in the bed, but feeling unfulfilled. You know, mm -hmm. I'm feeling by myself. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. So um, connect with me. Send me your name, your information, and I'll make sure I FedEx that out to you right away. Um, God bless you. And Cassandra? Yes. Well, you know, one thing I want to remind every person who's watching on tonight, something that Dr. Kirby said, it says that problems have a shelf life. Mm -hmm. And eventually the intensity of the problem, it will wane. And it will not be the thing that's in front of your face. But what we want to do is ensure that however we engage in addressing that problem, that we're able to uphold the love and the integrity of the relationship. Because when that problem is no longer pressing, what you'll be left with is your relationship and your marriage. And so you want to engage in a way that's going to uphold the integrity of the marriage and also uphold your own personal integrity. And so that would be my encouragement to remember that let's attack the problem and not each other. Because what we'll be left with is definitely each other. Yeah, you're going to be right here. <laughs> so um, I also, um, um, uh, uh, Pastors Vint, uh, Vincent, Ashley Thomas, I want everyone to know how they can connect with you all as well. If they want to reach out, connect with you as well. Well, we're on the social media web. Yeah, we are all over there. So, you know, you can just search our names, uh, Vince uh, Thomas, uh, Vince Thomas Jr. and Ashley Thomas. Mm -hmm. But uh, just for more, uh, we, we too, really one of the hallmarks of our ministry, one of our values is generosity. So, you know, we started really from mm -hmm. nothing, but started with giving what we had and God from there just multiplied it. And so we made that just the fabric of our ministry. So if you go to the outlet.cc, we've got all of our messages, all of our teachings, everything for free. We don't charge a penny for anything that we do because the word says in Romans chapter eight, freely we receive, therefore freely we give. And so um, when you go to our site, you can subscribe for blogs every Monday. You know, I make it a point to just send an encouraging word uh, to your inbox. Uh, just a quick brief word. Uh, the Bible says, blessed are the short winded for they will be invited back. <laughs> so, <laughs> make sure we get right to the point, but uh, just go to 
theoutlet.cc and, uh, you know, just uh, have at it and just be blessed by the content that we've been able to uh, present for over the last two years. Yes. Well, goodness, I can't thank you all enough. And, um, well, upliftingrelationships.com definitely have free resources there for you. Um, if you want a a guide for creating a plan for your marriage, you can you can actually um, click the subscribe button and it will send you one immediately to your email address. And it gives you a checklist of 10 critical areas to create a plan, your vision, your mission. And it's a really good way to kind of get started with that anchor for the purpose, vision and mission of your marriage. OK. Yeah. So we are just so wonderfully grateful. I thank you all for being participants on tonight. I know that what you said touched somebody. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you never know what the, these seeds are doing after you've sown them. And yeah. so I just want to say thank you so very much. And, um, I, you know, I got the experts on tonight, whoever would like to lead us out with prayer, and then we'll call it a night and, and goodbye. I'm going to defer to Minister Rachel. She, she, I, I sense that from the start. Mm -hmm. She, she had a word to pray us yes. out, close us out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all hearts and minds are connected. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We come giving you praise. We come giving you glory through your name. You are the lover of our soul. You are the king of us kings and lord of us lords. So we come praising you and lifting you up as the most high God. We thank you, Father God, right now for every couple, every marriage, every family that is connected right now that's watching. Lord, and we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We thank you that your word has no limits and no boundaries, that your anointing knows no distance. And so right now we say, peace be still to every storm that has been brewing under the surface of every marriage. We know that they are not here by accident, but we know that they are here, Father God, through grace. We know that they were led here to get encouraged we know that they were led here, Father God, that their families may be restored, that they may have happiness and joy flowing through their home and be an example for their children. So right now we rebuke the devil, we rebuke the devourer, we bind him in the name of Jesus. He will not continue to be able to bring destruction and dissension in the homes of the families that are watching and engaged. But we thank you, Father God, that angels are surrounding and help, and the Holy Spirit is convicting, Father God, those of us, Father, who know better to do better. So we thank you right now that every marriage that is watching is healed. They are whole with nothing missing or broken from their marriage. In Jesus' name, let what God put together, no man put asunder, and it is so. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and thank you all. And thank you all for everyone who's watching on tonight. Feel free to share this video. Something was said that you know would encourage a friend, a family member, a colleague. Feel free to share this video um, so that we can touch as many marriages as possible. That's our, that's our mission here um, at Uplifting Relationships. Um, to uh, equip people with knowledge and skills that are needed to have a healthy relationship or marriage. And so I thank you all tonight. We'll sign off. Um, we're here every week on Wednesday nights. Not this long, but we are here <laughs> Wednesday nights. Hey, if Google, just... turn the study room lights to red. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. That's right. I don't know. I may call on you all again. Pastor Ashley, whatever you like. <laughs> In the words of Barry White, practice what you preach. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a delightful time and I thank you all so much and you guys have a good rest of the week and God bless you all so very much thank you from the bottom of my Yay. heart good night. Good night.